Welcome back to Redirected. My name is Andrew East, and this is a show where we sit down with celebrities, athletes, entrepreneurs, really anybody who has experienced a pivot or change in life. I call these changes redirections. And we sit down with these guests so that I personally can learn how they've made it through these changes, and hopefully you can as well. Let me first address that it's been a while since we have released an episode, and so it's good to be back. Uh, we've been kind of arranging things, and we have a fun series coming up. But today is somewhat of a unique episode. Uh, I sit down with my friend Matt over. And Matt and I have known each other for probably eight years. And Matt and I both played football. We both played the same position in football. And our journeys to play professional football were somewhat similar, although Matt was a couple years ahead of me. He was a big inspiration for me. We overlapped a lot as we were trying out for different teams. And uh, his story is unique because in this show, we sit down with people who usually have a redirection and career path. But Matt, has a story where he refused to do anything else other than pursue his dream of the NFL. And so it's really cool to sit down with someone who is as dedicated, devoted, and focused as he is. I enjoyed this conversation. You'll notice that we do kind of wig out on our long snap lingo, um, but I encourage you to kind of take what Matt's talking about and apply it to whatever your career is, because I think there is a lot of overlap. So hope you enjoy this one with Matt. If you want to find out more about what he's up to, you can find his information in the show notes down below. Uh, and if you wouldn't mind rating the show, subscribing to it, that would be great. If you have any guests you would like to suggest, just drop it in the review, and that'd be fantastic. But hope you enjoy this one with Matt Overton. Let's get into it. Matt Overton, thanks for joining today. It's good to see you. Good to see you, brother. How you doing? I'm good, man. Listen, I want to start off just to let everybody know why you're an important uh, figure in my life. First is you played for the Colts for a lot of years, and I'm a Colts fan by, uh, by you know, nature. Grew up in Indianapolis. The second is your story as a long snapper uh, inspired me to continue pursuing my dream of playing in the NFL. And to watch you grind through it like you did uh, was was really inspiring. And the third reason that you're special is my first game in the NFL, we were actually playing each other. So yes. it's kind of fun to, to now be sitting here. And uh, we've known each other for a handful of years. But yeah. uh, this is really our first sit-down conversation. So thanks for taking the time. My pleasure, man. Excited about it. Cool. So I love to start off by, if you could, just sharing what your upbringing was, what your parents did, where you grew up, things like that. All right, man. So uh, in a nutshell, I'll keep it keep it quick and short, but uh, originally from California, the East Bay. So um, just east of San Francisco, uh, near Oakland, a town called San Leandro. That's where I was born. That's where my dad's from. And so lived there for a few years. And then my mom and dad moved us out to Tracy, which is a small agricultural community just south of Sacramento. So now I'm a little bit um, further east out in the country. And a lot of people don't realize that California has a lot of countryside. So uh, I'm a little farm town and um, about 45 minutes east of the Bay Area. And so grew up there. And uh, my mom is from Seattle. And so her her side of the family is the big football family. So she's one of three daughters um, raised by a head football coach. And he, my grandfather, my papa was a, a head football coach for almost 30 years. And so when I uh, was born, he was kind of in the heyday of his coaching career. And I was raised around the game. And, you know, coincidentally, my dad played against my grandfather in college and that's not what? how my mom and dad met. Yeah, it's a crazy story. They, <laughs> what? They, I'm trying to do the they, math they, on that. They met in California, and then they got to talking. My dad played at Cal State Hayward. My grandfather coached at University of Puget Sound, two Division II schools. And, you know, my mom was like, well, my, my dad was the head coach of UPS. And so we found out that they played against each other. And we, have, we still have, like, the, uh, the program from that game. Um, so that's pretty wild. Crazy. So they got married and uh, my mom now moved down to California. And uh, as soon as I was able to uh, sign up for football, organized football, I was, I was in there. So I think seven years old was my very first time uh, playing football. Excuse the background noise. So we're getting ready to move to Nashville, right? So we're getting our house ready for, uh, 
to, to list in the market. So we're getting our bathrooms redone. So come you on hear down, any saws bro. or <laughs> yeah. hey man, if you hear any construction <laughs> noises, it's all normal. We just got some, we got some uh, background noise from the construction workers. So, um, but anyway, yeah. So I remember one day my mom was like, Hey, you're playing football this summer. And I was, I think I was seven. And, um, at that age, I, I had no really care about football. I mean, I, I, I liked it, but, um, I didn't realize that it would soon be my passion. And, um, and, and she's, she's the one, my mom's the one that signed me up and I was playing tackle football at age seven and, and, uh, been, been playing ever since, which is crazy to even think. And, um, yeah. but then, uh, you know, high school, Tracy high school, um, we'll get into the lawn snapping thing here, but, um, you know, kind of an all around player played offensive line, defensive line linebacker and, and, uh, you know, wasn't the most athletic dude. Um, but I had, uh, I had the drive. I had the passion. I loved football with, with with everything I had, and I'm um, really dedicated everything to football. And I played baseball and golf and stuff like that, but football was my main main thing. So early on, my dream of the NFL was it was there. That was my that was my dream. I want to be a 49er, and um, and so you know just that was it. You know, I wanted to play at Notre Dame, and and you know my favorite movie was Rudy, and I mean you just. I was, I was all in. So going to high school, I was a, you know, four-year starter and team captain. And it, it was my uh, freshman year that I played center on the offensive line and just had the natural knack of, you know, just snapping the ball between the legs, you know. And um, I, I recall, um, you know, the coaches bringing everybody up after practice and saying, Hey, if you can kick punt or long snap, stay after practice, we got to figure this thing out. And <laughs> the coaches kind of made me uh, stay because I, I was already, you know, the center and it makes sense to possibly use your center as your snapper. So I, and this was the first time I ever did it. So um, I, I guess I really don't remember to be honest with you. I, I guess I, I was fairly decent at it because I did it all through high school. Um, I really don't remember doing it until probably my senior year was when, you know, I got a little notice on the position. And, and, uh, at this time, you know, this is early 2000. So I'm a bit, bit older than you are, but, um, long snapping wasn't like a scholarship position. It wasn't, um, you know, the NFL was kind of like a tight end or a linebacker or offensive line would do it. So it wasn't a specialty position uh when I was in high school so I knew it could help me uh and value my stock as possibly getting the scholarship as another position but um at that time there was no schools truly giving out a scholarship just for long snapping so my my way I had to go I had to be a positional player so I had to be a linebacker or a fullback or whatever and I was too small to play um offensive line and so um I went to junior college um Diablo Valley Junior College in the Bay Area, and uh, I went there as a linebacker slash D end and long snapped, and that was where I really was able to get the um, recognition for long snapping. That's when my coaches were like, "Gosh, man, you're the by far the best snapper we've ever had." So I, I quickly, um, you know, started going to some camps that were available, and again, the, this is. So, so before all this, uh, the new trend of all these kicking camps yeah. and snapping camps, I mean, there was nothing really available. And so at that time, and you probably know this early on, it's really just kind of a self-taught, um, position. So, uh, I don't think YouTube was even around then. So, I mean, I just, I remember reaching out to Patrick Manley and Patrick Manley at the time was the bears long snapper and he played there for 20 years or something. And um, he was a guy that I looked up to and he had his own little long snapping camp, you know, in the off season and would train kids. So he was somebody that I reached out to and, and was possibly going to link up with um, Ray guy, um, hall of fame punter for the Raiders had his own camp in the Bay area. So I went to his camp one year and got some work and, and started, you know, being coached a little bit, but really, I mean, it wasn't, um, it wasn't until really the NFL that I had any coaching um, related to snapping. It was just kind of like a coach would just pull you aside and be like, Hey, let's see what you got. You know, they couldn't really wow. break down the fundamentals of it. And so I uh, got yeah, two years of junior college. And um, at the time I was a little stubborn. I, I had some 
legit walk on opportunities to snap division one, but I was like, man, I want to play defense so bad. And so um, I went to division two school, Western Washington played uh, defense in there and long snapped for two years. And so, you know, going there, it was, uh, there was a punter there, all American um, named Michael Kanan. And Michael was, his draft year was the year that I transferred to Western. And I remember I was in class one day and this is like my first week on campus. Um, I get a text from the coach saying, hey, can you be on the field in like 15 minutes? Michael's got his pre-draft workout with the Seahawks. So I get, I get suited up, I roll out there and I snap to him for his private pre-draft workout. And it was after that workout that the coach or scout or whoever was there, he's like, hey man, like you're pretty legit at this snapping thing. We're gonna keep an eye on you for the next two years completely against NCAA rules that I was even out there. So wow! thank God I went to a small school where no one even cared about what we did. Right? <laughs> so two years later, I mean, I had, I, I did well, um, snap, I snapped, you know, I played, I was two, uh, two year starter there and, you know, it was, uh, I did, I did pretty well, I guess, you know, again, like no, I had nobody critiquing what I was doing. It was just kind mm. of a self-taught thing. And, and so I went to Seattle um, in 2007. Uh, I got signed as a free agent, and uh, I went to my first mini camp. And dude, it was, I had no clue what I was doing. Like it was just like, first of all, you know, just kind of awe and shock that I'm even there, you know. And um, this is the first time really being like a coach being really critical about snapping, like the location, the operation, your velocity, and so I it was, it was a bit of a uh, head game for me. And, and, um, you know, the acronym, not for long NFL, you know, like that was me. I was there for three days and back to school, man. So no way. Yeah, definitely a humble start with me and the league. And, and, um, you know, so I went back to school, finished up and, um, you know, I, I went to the arena league and played a little bit of the, uh, in the arena league as a fullback linebacker. And, just try to keep my name relevant, I guess. There was no no snapping in the arena league, but it was fun. And um, 2009 was when the United Football League um, came about. And that was really my saving grace because that league provided an opportunity for guys like you and I that if there is no NFL, like, where do you go? There's no no place to go develop. There's no, um, no other league besides, like, the CFL, but they're not really signing Americans to go long snap. So – I mean, this was my opportunity. So in 2009, I went out and played in the, the UFL and played for the Florida team. Jay Gruden was my head coach. Um, no way. Yeah. So, you know, Jay played for Jay in Washington. Yeah. So that's another cool, you know, connection we can talk about because a lot of that staff over there in Washington were, were guys like your strength coach, Chad. And, and um, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of dudes over there that are UFL alum. So it, it, it's crazy how things will work out. but. Um, that was my opportunity to solely be a long snapper and focus in on snapping. And after that season, um, you know, I went, I got re-signed by Seattle and long story short, like Seattle was a team that brought me back and forth a handful of times. And you're familiar with how that goes. And, um, you know, just for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And so I went back to the United football league for two more years and, um, it was my last year there, 2011 is kind of around the lockout year that the NFL had. So there wasn't any movement free agent wise. So, you know, did a lot of uh, soul searching and figuring out what, you know, what, what life looks like for me. And, you know, had those talks with my parents about, you know, just, you know, hanging it up and moving on and, and um, you know, possibly becoming a police officer like my dad was at the time. And, and so, you know, just kind of had those, you kind of at the fork in the road, which way do you go? You know? And so, um, at this, at this point, you know, I'm already what four years removed from college and, um, going on my fifth year, I have a little bit of experience, but you know, the long time position is, is, is hard to really break in. And so, um, I, I kind of just told myself in 2012, like, this is going to be it, you know, put all my eggs in my basket train and go, go to all these camps. So I went to, um, Coach Zahner's camp out in Arizona, which has become really, really good for specialists. You know, it, it gives them an opportunity to showcase their skill, and it's only for punters, long snappers, and kickers. And so I went out there and, and did really well, and that's where the Colts 
saw me and brought me in and that was 2012 and and got by the grace of God got uh, made that roster that year and played there for five years and then went to Jacksonville for another two and a half and you know that's kind of where I'm at now so it's just so, it's pretty wild you know and that's where you and I in 2018 played against each other and yeah your first man. game and, and um it's wild man so it, it's been it's like I said I'm 35 years old now you know I still have opportunities to work out for teams and possibly play and, and it's just it, it's a bit surreal that I can even say that I'm in my I'm 35 and you know, still kind of hanging on to this child's game that we've been playing for a long time. So um, it's been a blessing, man. And um, real quick, Matt. Yeah. For people who don't know what long snapping is, how do you describe what you do? Upside down quarterback. Man. <laughs> it's just like, you're the quarterback, you, you're, but you're doing it upside down and you, you snap the ball eight yards to the kicker on field goals and PATs and 15 yards to the punter on, on punts. And um really I, I jokingly say hey I'm the, I'm the upside down quarterback and people laugh and chuckle but it makes sense to a lot of people who really don't know what the snapper is and people often think that I, I'm the center on offense and yeah I can, <laughs> I can play I can be a backup on the offensive line and, and people just really don't understand that, how different um, the position is and how specialized it is and and really um it's it's a multitask kind of position where you're on offense, but then you quickly go to defense, and it, it's, yeah. it's wild, man. So it's pretty cool. Here's what here's what's so awesome about your story. A lot of people I interview for this show are the whole kind of thesis is people who have transitioned careers because of one thing or another. Sure. And your story is the past. 13 years you refused to do anything else pretty much besides chase your dream and pursue the NFL I mean I don't know much about the UFL but I know about these other startup leagues outside the NFL and I know that it's it's hardly a living wage if at all that you're getting paid and so if you you're out there for three years I guess just to keep your name relevant so that you could take that next step to the NFL. And I think you and I are different in the sense that I really, and we've known each other for years. You probably have observed this, but like I never fully went all in. Like you said, you, you, you went all in and said, I'm going to just give this everything I had. Um, it's amazing that you had the courage really to do that where I, I really never did. I was like, Oh my gosh, you had that conversation with your parents about hanging it up and what are you going to do after I was already trying to do other things. You know what I'm saying? Cause I realized that shoot, this is more difficult than I thought it would be. And it's not working out for me. Um, so it took me five years, I guess it took you five or six, but uh, hats off to you for that. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, I, it's just, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, um, a lot of people don't understand the grind of a free agent. And especially in our position where there's only 32 guys across the league who can who can say they have that job. And so it's not like there's, you know, two or three on a roster. Right. So we're fighting our, our little small pool of free agents are fighting year in and year out for that one spot. And so it's one of those things where the position, um, it's really like legitimately there's maybe one or two spots a year, if that, that are really um, kind of up for grabs. You know, teams like to hold on to their guy for a long time. As you can see, there's guys in the league that have been doing it for 10 plus years. And um, not to say that they're any better than you or I, it's just that they've become super reliable and – they've been de- dependable on that field for that team and that coach and that GM or whoever is there, they're just like, you know, we're not going to change anything up because we, you know, we like what we got, you know? And so the continuity of that unit is, is pretty, it's pretty special and it, it, it goes a long way. And there's not many teams now. I mean, really the only team that sticks out in my mind is the Ravens. They've had the same trio for, I think going on nine years now. And that's just really unheard of nowadays. There's so much turnover in the league. Every every team's trying to get younger. And, you know, that's what I, I face now as an older free agent is like, you know, 
you know, in their minds, like, yeah, we know what Matt can do, but you know, we want to see what the future is all about. And I, I, I fully understand that I've embraced that. It's been, you know, a few years ago, I, I struggled with that, but I got to the point now where now starting to transition into things beyond football has gotten me excited. It takes my energy to a different area. Still, I still pay attention and I still, you know, take that energy and focus and, and train and, and prepare for an opportunity if, it, if that call comes. However, I know how crazy you, you make yourself get if you just, if you just stay in that world mm-hmm. constantly and waiting for that phone call. So I wish I learned that a little bit early on and, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. but you know, now that I'm older and now that I'm married and now that I'm having a baby on the way, um, I, I found over the past few years, like, man, now's the time I want to go enjoy something else that I have mm-hmm. a passion for. And that's where, you know, real estate comes into play and that's where, you know, coaching comes into play and, you know, doing some other things with my wife and, and being able to spend time with family, you know, during the fall is, is something that is really special because football takes that away from you. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it's been, it's been a great journey. Um, but I'm excited for, for the future and what it holds. And, And my thing now is like, and if there's a team that needs me due to an injury or COVID or, you know, someone's not performing well, by all means, I'll be ready. Um, and I, I feel like my my perspective has shifted at what my role would be on that team. Obviously, my role is to, to long snap. But, I mean, I get a greater sense of purpose going in there and being one of the older guys and, and being a, a veteran leader and, and helping these young guys along and, and just being like a, a shining light um, in that locker room. And, and, and uh, I remember, you know, when I was a rookie, you know, Adam Vinatieri was – going on his I don't know 17th year and Adam's 12 years older than I am so I was like I felt so young just being around him and I could never quite understand man man what would it be like to be yeah 40 years old in a 20 year old locker room and so last year when I was in Jacksonville you know I was 34 at the time and and I was the oldest it was me Nick Foles Clayus Campbell I think we were the only ones like in our 30s but I was older than the both of them and it just kind of, it, 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 you know, it took, uh, kind of took my breath away. I was like, man, I'm, I'm now in that position where I'm the oldest guy on the roster. And it's, uh, I never, I never felt like, um, I was treated any differently, but it almost, it was almost like, I felt like my, my role, my perspective shifted. It's like, man, it's a, it's an honor to be the old guy in the locker room. I know we joke with Vinatieri all, all the time and, and really he could be, you know so many so many guys he could be you know a, a, a parental figure a dad figure for so many guys on the team just because you know he was playing his rookie year was when guys were being born now so it's like it's it's crazy to even think um but it, it is an honor being the older guy in that locker room and 35 and, is an old head matt well that's it like, is and that's so <laughs> why it's, and that's why ben and terry like i never thought like i mean he's 47 and i know he's not playing right now but i just can't even imagine like you know, 35 feels like, gosh, damn, that, that, that gap is so wide. But then you go even another 12 years, you're like, it's just unheard of. But, you know, it's it, yeah. the wisdom that you have from all of your experience. Like, if you can share that with these 19, 20, 21-year-old kids who are coming straight out of college, man, it's like that, 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 that was meaningful to me to be able to share that with them. Yeah. All right. So I want you to put yourself back in the shoes of uh, your first time around the Seahawks. Signed as a free agent. Yeah. Uh, you're there at the mini camp. For me, I had dreamed of playing in the NFL. I didn't know if it was actually going to work out, but I signed with the Chiefs, my my first team. And yeah. pretty much, dude, it was like a wide open door. They pretty much said, like, you're our guy, just don't mess it up. And I went in there, and it was the first time where, like you were saying, the coaches – were a little bit more on you and you realize like, Oh, this is my job. This is also their job. Uh, a paycheck's on the line. Health insurance is on the line. I don't have anything to distract me. I don't, I actually shouldn't have anything else to distract me. This needs to be my full focus. And I got so in my head about it, about it just because like I'm standing with my toes on the line of my dream. And it's like, all I have to do is just do do my job that like do long snap, like I've been doing for the past 10 years. 
and I couldn't do it. Did you experience that at all? Like that, I mean, you were, had worked so hard. You gave up so much. And I don't know if you experienced that anxiety like I did. Oh, my, and it wasn't even my rookie year. It's, it's, I, it, it has its ebbs and flows of anxiety, man. Um, just different phases of life. But my rookie, my, well, my official rookie year when I had my cup of coffee when the, with the Seahawks, I was there, man. Like, again, I'm coming from a Division two school. I had no business being there. Um, I knew I had the talent. Obviously, I wouldn't be there if I didn't. But I was there with, I mean, no coaching. I mean, it was unprecedented for anybody in my school to get a look after college. Um, so there was a lot of hype behind it. Uh, I kind of let that get to me, the pressure of that. Um, and you're just not around that level of, like, com competition, right? You're not – it's just different. And so guys were – when I was in at Western, guys were there for engineering. Guys were there for education. Guys were there for other – and football was just fun. Um, and so I think I went in there just a little – I mean, just naive, um, intimidated. And so – Again, and it really being put through a gauntlet of snapping drills where before it was never, ever a, a thing. It was just, I would go, I would do my defensive stuff. And then when it was field goal, I would maybe warm up a little bit beforehand and then go out there and do it. And so, um, yeah, my first, my first mini camp, um, the coach called me Mr. Eager because like I was on the sideline. And again, this is my first time really just honing in on long snapping. So up to this point, I was like prepared to, I was prepared to do bag drills, conditioning drills, agility drills. Mm -hmm. and pretty much I was standing on the sideline of mini camp, just holding the bag, waiting for pump period yeah. or whatever. And so I, I remember asking the coach, I'm like, are we, I think going into mini camp, I was more mentally prepared for like the physical, like conditioning of it. Like yes. I was like, man, I better be in shape. Right. Preach. And That's my whole career, bro. Like, I was just like, I need it. Like, instead of focusing on like my craft, I focused on something else. Yes. And you know, that coach is like, bro, you're only snapping. You're not running on the field. You're not doing this. Like, just chill. Like, and I, I just, again, I psyched myself out and um, put too much pressure on me, you know, and, and, and that was just a learning experience for me really. And so, you know, going into, you know, that was 20, 2007. So 2012, five years later, had a little bit of experience between then and, you know, played in the UFO for three years. So that, that kind of helped my, my mental game a little bit, but even going into that and really being in the thick of like a legit competition with a veteran, Justin Snow, who'd been there for, I think at this point was 10 years, Super Bowl champion, you know, one of the team leaders. So now it's like critiquing all the little things, right? Like it's mm -hmm. perfect laces, you know, your snap, um, velocity and the timing and obviously protection. And, and so I, I felt like, I felt like the coaches really wanted me to win the job. But with that being said, there had to be like no doubt in their mind that I was better or, or able to fill in the shoes of Justin Snow, who had been there forever. There was no question in their mind that they could have Justin there for another handful of years. But, um, I think with the new regime, new they had a new GM, new head coach at the time. Like this is like their way of turning the team over, and you know it was like kind of the same as you. Like this is your position, this is your your job to lose. And yeah. so having that pressure, man. I remember in training camp, I had a few kind of rough practices, and I, I mean, I just let the anxiety get to me and the stress. I'm like, man, I'm I'm cool if they just cut me and I go home. Like I just this. Please take this stress and anxiety away, man. Dude, it literally, it, it's yeah. so hard emotionally and mentally. And yeah. it's hard to even explain, but continue. Sorry to interrupt. You're explaining no, it. No, it's, it's, it's such a real thing. And, you know, with someone like you and I in a position where you really feel like you can't go talk to somebody because no one knows what you're going through um, from like a fundamental standpoint of snapping. Um, obviously, there's so many people on that team in training camp trying to win a job that, really anxiety is going through the minds of everybody for the most part. Um, unless you're, you know, one of the marquee guys in the team and you, you know, you have some stability there and, and whatnot, but um, it was, it was, you know, I, I had my, I was very lucky to have like a small group of rookies that we can just talk about things and we can kind of just 
lay down all the stresses and worries and doubts and like understand that like you know we're not in this battle alone we're obviously we're we're competing for a different position but the the doubts and the worry that's all real some commonalities that we can talk about right everyone's going through the same thing and it's training camp supposed to be stressful it's supposed to you know you know, uh, help you prepare mentally and, and whatnot. But I mean, like I said, by the grace of God, I made the team that year and it was weird, man. It was a, I felt like training camp was such a stressful time for me. And then once preseason game started, um, I remember the first, my first game, it was a home game and it was Andrew Luck's first home game. So uh, it was, I think the national televised game that, that week because of the hype be- behind Andrew Luck. And so I made sure I'm like, mom, dad, I don't know how long I'm going to be here for, but if I'm playing in this game, you better be here because this is what it's all about. Yeah. So I made sure that they flew out to this game, even though it was just a meaning, meaningless uh, preseason game, but to me it was everything. And so um, I had – the coach gave me the, the second half of the game to play. So the entire first half, of course, I'm sitting there like – pacing the sideline, like, you know, watching Justin play. and yeah. And just like watching the clock. All right. It's, you know, now it's the second quarter. All right. Now it's almost halftime. And then, you know, for whatever reason, man, like Justin was struggling that game and um, it was, it was odd to me. And so I wouldn't say it gave me confidence, but it was like, all right, well, if this guy can make some mistakes, you know, yeah. like, hey, it can happen to anybody, you know? Yeah. And so I go in, I go into the locker room at halftime and we had a rookie punter at the time too. So like he and I were getting ready to, play the second half which is cool so he and I can like lean on each other and um so we go out there and you know again third down hey, we, we got the ball it's third down all right punt team's probably you know on deck so we go out there for my first my first uh punt and it's almost like you just you you're like you black out you just don't even remember like the play and like I was so zoned in I was nervous as all hell but man, I just remember just like, I don't remember snapping the ball. I don't remember blocking. I just remember running down that field. It was a fair catch. But like, I just made sure that I, I was like the first, one of the first guys down there. And when I had that play and it like, that play solidified like all the hard work over all the years, like just that one moment proved yeah. to myself that I could do it. Um, and I had, I played really well, you know, I, I, I for the, for, I, I probably had like six snaps that game. It, it did pretty well. And I was so ecstatic. Like it was a celebration for me and my family. Yeah. And, um, and then I played so well that the next week was a Sunday night game against the Steelers. And the coach pulled me aside and said, Hey, you're our starter this weekend. So now the stress just <laughs> being everything, like it just re it, 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 it popped his head up again in, in my mind. Like, Oh my gosh, here we go. The pressure's on. Like, and again, it was like all that stress and anxiety was built up all week. But then once the game started and I got in there and I got my first snap, it was like it all went away. Yeah. And that continued throughout like the preseason. And um, like I said, I made the team that year. And it was a challenging year because my coach that year just, I mean, he tried to break me all season, you know, like, and luckily I had, you know, McAfee and Benetary to lean on and, and have fun with them. But I mean, it was a challenging time. And so 2012 was really good or was, was, was difficult. You know, I had, I had some challenges in, in early in 2013 with a new coach. And I remember I missed a blocking assignment and my world crumbled, right? I thought it was the end of my career. And then um, played well. And then 2015 was another year where I really struggled and, and I had a lot of stuff going on off the field. And those distractions really just took away my focus. Um, and then 2016 was a, was a really good year. Um, and then I got released um, early 2017, which is like sideswiped me, didn't expect it coming, but it happened. And, um, and then I found myself, I found myself in Jacksonville, which was the last place I ever wanted to be. You've been there, you know what it's like. <laughs> it was the worst place. Tom Coughlin. I'm, I'm not even exaggerating you, but when I got released from the Colts and I sat down with my agent and we looked at possibilities of where things could, could happen, Jacksonville was the last team on my list. You know, I thought Tinker was fine there, but outside of that, it was, I played there, 
awful organization. They never win. Yeah. I don't like Jacksonville. Never wanted to go there. But lo and behold, God took me there, you know, and um, actually turned out to be one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. Um, and it was fun. And that first year there, we had a lot of success. We went to the AFC Championship. So that was fun. Um, but, you know, it, it's just crazy how things work out and God will take you places where you don't expect to go and yeah. it works out in, in, in your favor and, um, you, so, you build relationships, you know, so I'd yeah, I think, I think the biggest mistake that I made my rookie year, and you said this multiple times, you had that group of rookies that you were able to kind of lay the stress yeah. out with, right? You had, you were all kind of in the same boat. Then you had McAfee and Vinatieri who you could lean on my rookie year, dude, I was so stressed out that I pretty much did practice, went back to my hotel room, locked myself in the door. And just like, I was like, I got to visualize cause that's the best thing I could do with my time. And the result was isolating myself and it snowballed the whole problem of me being in my head, not having confidence. I would go out on the field and as, as opposed to like having a, I, I had friends, don't get me wrong, but having someone who would like really pick me up during practice, like when they're stressed out too, didn't have that. So anyway, the isolation did not help. Kudos to you for, for moving into that. Um, no, nah, but don't, don't get me wrong, bro. If I had a, it is crazy. It's like one bad play in a game or practice, like screws your whole week up. Yeah. So like, I mean, there were times where I would just come home after a game or practice and I would want to curl up in a ball and go hide in a cave, dude, not see anybody, not talking to anybody. And I mean, it's, but it's, just, it's crazy. It's really not a good way to deal with the problem. No, like you, it's you're, the, you're it's, really just, uh, exaggerating it's it. It's the worst. It's the worst. And, and well, sorry to cut you off, but the, like the, to your point of, um, of, the concept of community, like I'll, I'll never forget my first time playing, you know, you had, you flew your parents in. I was standing on that field in Jacksonville. You had the flyover, they had the big old flag out there. And I had my wife and my parents and brothers. And that was like the most tangible example of here I am. I'm, I'm the one in the cleats and in the helmet, but my gosh, I had so many people help me get to that point coaches yeah. teammates family friends my wife and like i'm thankful that i had that moment to like really humble me of like no this isn't about you like stop stop thinking about yourself so much because mm -hmm. there's so many other people who who deserve the credit and who can also bear the load good or bad you know so um yeah anyway that was a departure but no, so let's let's talk about that game real quick, right? So <laughs> I, I'm in, because I'm interested because I know how it feels to be signed by a team and you literally go into the game with no practice, right? So yeah. and that was kind of your situation, right? I mean, you were signed on a Saturday or a Friday? Signed on a Friday, didn't have I, – I had like the, the tryout reps, so it was like 12 snaps. They were like, yeah. all right, good, good enough. And then yeah. I got on the plane the next day. Um, I hadn't been in pads and – so I was with Jacksonville again. There's a lot of yeah. overlap between you and I where like the Colts yeah. brought me in that summer after you released the Seahawks. Yeah. I think at some point there was overlap the Jaguar. So anyway, but, um, hadn't been in pads since, I don't know, July, August. Yeah. yeah. And I was finally at the point where I was like, bro, you're signed. Yeah. You're going to play in a game. Like there was no practice that I had because like we were literally playing in two days, there's no practice to, to mess up in. So it was yeah. like, it was an ideal situation for me in that sense where I was just like, all right, you just got to go out there and do it. Yeah. There's no yeah. other option. And I think the expectations are pretty low. <laughs> like, so, yeah. so that yeah. was all very freeing for me, you know? No, it was good. And you, and you ended up doing really well, snapped the game winning snap. I mean, I remember that game, like, because of the fact that, you know, I know your story, I was rooting for you. You signed like last minute. Um, that was your first game. I mean, it's just it was cool, man. Like, yeah, because yeah, I understand that grind. I understand like the significance of that moment for you. And um, I don't know how the hell you guys beat us, but you, had, <laughs> you didn't have a starting quarterback. We did. I mean, it was a, it was like the it was like the it was like the, the 
poop bowl was that game. Like it was like some of the two worst games in the league, and <laughs> it was, it was insane, a, no man. no touchdowns scored in that game. I mean, it was like golly, but you guys had that beautiful game winning drive, and then kicked that kicked that game winner. Man, you snapped that dime, and dude, my yeah. first punt though was against Calais Campbell, who's like. One of the biggest dudes, and he's like six foot whatever, and like yeah. three hundred whatever pounds, and like he's rushing me on my, and I haven't played football really in yeah. a long yeah. time. Okay, let's take a quick break. As Drew gets older, we've started trying out solid foods and supplementing her feedings with Infamil formula. I love it so much because now I get to be more involved with her meal times and that whole learning and discovery process, which is so cool to see. Whether you choose to formula feed, breastfeed, or supplement. It's absolutely a personal choice and you should choose what works best for your family and your baby. And if you decide not to breastfeed or just isn't an option, Infamil Inspire, the brand's closest formula to breast milk, is a great option as it has immune supporting lactoferrin, DHA for brain development, and dual prebiotics. Immune health and development is so important and we're so grateful Infamil Inspire helps support that kind of foundation for Drew. Try Infamil Inspire by visiting shop.infamil.com forward slash inspire five and enter coupon code inspire five to receive $5 off an Infamil Inspire infant formula 30 ounce refill box. Let's get back to it. But I, I, I do want you to talk about because I think this it's kind of uh, an applicable subject to more than just beyond football. You mentioned how you were stubborn and you want you wanted to go to play junior college so you could play offense and defense and other positions. Um, and like trying to force, uh, not, not force your dream, but force your version of the dream. Right. At what point did you lay that stubbornness aside and, and say, Hey, actually my best chance of going far with this is long snap. Was it like a coach who had a conversation with you? Was it a personal realization? Tell me about that. Yeah. So there was a few coaches along, along my path that definitely, you know, took notice to my skill and ability to long snap and really kind of paint the picture for me. It was in junior college when they're like, man, like you could probably get a scholarship for the, for this at a division one school. And it could be uh, an opportunity for the NFL. And so it was junior college when that coach kind of told me, Hey man, you're pretty legit. This could be an opportunity for a scholarship. You know, that, that definitely lit a fire in me to take it a little more seriously. And, but at the time, like I was still, I was still a, um, a positional player and I was doing well, I was excelling in those areas. Um, and then, like I mentioned, I had some preferred walk on. So, you know, in that case, like, yeah, it would have, it would have been really cool to go to a division one school and play, you know, at the time it was like Washington state was a school that was um, offering me a walk on and, don't get me wrong. I, I, I wish I, part of me wishes that I went down that road and did that. However, you know, it worked out for me because I was able to, to go to a school where I can play right away. I can contribute. I got a scholarship. Um, I was close to family. I went to a beautiful school, great school for me in Western Washington. Um, and, you know, I think honestly, being able to, and you can attest to this too, like when they, when cooks, scouts start breaking down and analyzing long snappers. They look at some traits and obviously snapping the ball is critical and being consistent in that, that aspect. But you know, your size and athleticism really start separating you from guys who can just snap really well. And so when I was going through, yeah, I went to a division two school, but when I stacked up against the other guys coming out that year, my pro day numbers like far exceeded any of theirs. So my 40 was legitimate. My bench press was legitimate. My athleticism and, and being able to show that I can move and block and run down field, that really, that really, all that preparation from DN and linebacker, that, that skill set really helped me um, kind of separate myself a little bit from the pack, from the Division One guys. Yeah. And so I remember going to like workouts with other long snappers and other pro days. And like I was, I was, I was ready for my 40, my shuttle, my L drill, my bench. And a lot of these guys shied away from that testing because they weren't good at it. You know, they're running really slow 40s. They they couldn't rep 225 more than 10 times. I mean, they were just 
So like that really like looking back on my my path, I wouldn't have traded it for anything. Yeah, it was a, yeah. it was a more difficult path because, you know, you have that division two stigma attached to to me and you know all that kind of stuff. However, like those tools that I was able to develop um, outside of long snapping really helped me kind of um, prepare me for the protection side of long snapping and being yeah. able to cover downfield and stuff like that. So it's it cool was, that you yeah. it's cool that you like met you realize that there were certain qualifications that needed to be met. You did that. And then to a certain extent, you looked for ways to differentiate yourself and you did. Uh, I don't know if your bench press is as legitimate as mine, but it's, it's fine. Like we could talk about that later, <laughs> but no, I'm kidding. Hey, you're way yeah, strong. You're you way gotta, stronger you than six, I am. You got a six pack and you can do muscle up, dude. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Oh dude, we're going to do some CrossFit when you move down to Nashville, by the way, it's my, it's my newest. I don't know how you feel about it. I know it's a polarizing I've, I've subject. I've dabbled into it, man. And I've dabbled <laughs> and there's only so, so much I can do with CrossFit, but I'm, I'm I gotcha. Yeah. My, the next thing I want to talk about is, your whole career, pretty much, you were coming from the standpoint of an underdog, right? Yeah. yeah. At some point, three years into the league, I, I, I forget if the Colts ended up bringing competition in or is an abrupt release, but at some point, you become the favorite, right? Mm-hmm. Was that? Uh, I thrive in the in the position of the underdog because there's no expectations. Like we were talking about my first game. Yep. When I was the favorite, as in the case of Kansas City and my stint there, struggled because mm-hmm. I, I just felt the tangible expectations. Did you ever deal with that? Oh, for sure. So, <clears throat> so 2013 was the year that I got named to the Pro Bowl. So this is my second year with the, Col- the Colts. And looking back, I did not earn – I did not earn that. I got very lucky to get voted in by coaches. Um I played, I played decently well, but I certainly wasn't one of the best two in the league um, that year. So going to the Pro Bowl was obviously an incredible experience for my family and I. And it was one of those moments where it's like, oh, my goodness, like I, how did I even get here from where I began? And that, that moment really fueled me for the next year. And 2014 was the year that probably the most memorable season that I've had because uh, Vinatieri had his all pro year. McAfee had his all pro year. Our special teams was, I think, top three that year. That year we went to the AFC championship. And (laughs) I'm not going to lie, I was pretty stubborn because I felt like well, hey, if my kicker and punter are Pro Bowl players, I should be the Pro Bowl snapper. Mm-hmm. And that year, I didn't get I didn't get selected, and I was I was uh, super super upset. And uh, but we were still in the playoffs, so we were playing and, and all that kind of stuff. So, but I I get a thrill looking back, like man, like you know, it's it's cool getting personal accolades, but when you are a part of something like yeah. what. Vinatieri and McAfee did to be a part of that group was really really special I mean Vinatieri is going to be in the Hall of Fame McAfee probably would have been if he would have just kept playing and didn't decide to be a knucklehead on the internet but um, no like they are honestly the two of the best to ever do what they've done and so to be able to say that I worked with them for five years and they had that success was really really special that gave me confidence in my job um but to answer your initial question, um, so t- 2015, I became a free agent. And so that year, that off season, I signed a four year extension with them. And that's where kind of like my ego, my pride got in the way and I didn't take off season as seriously. And this is kind of where like, now you start dealing with outside distractions where now people are mar- wanting more of your time and you have the attention and you have the recognition. And like, I started doing like radio stuff, TV stuff, you know, stuff in LA in the off season. And like, it just took, took my focus away completely. And so 2015, even though I was the guy, cause I just signed an extension. I, I think for like the first three games, I just was like, I was not in the zone and it took me quite some time to get out of that, that funk that I was in and man, I felt like, 
I felt awful. I felt like I wasn't helping the team. I was hurting the team. I was, you know, really, really struggling and um, had some errant snaps and just like, yeah, I felt like, you know, not too long ago, I was on top of the world feeling like I was super confident that I would be part of this team for a long time. And then boom, you know, um, I got smacked right in the face with um, uh, some humble pie and, and like, man, like I just, I had to refocus my energy into that, your craft, like you're there for one job and one job only. The off the field stuff is cool, but if you let that be a distraction, man, it can be, it can really screw you up. And that's what it did to me. So yeah, uh, 2015 was, a, it started off rough and then it, it worked its way out and, and finished strong. And then 2016, uh, was a really another really good year. That was another strong year for Vinatieri and McAfee. McAfee got his second Pro Bowl or All Pro or whatever it was, and then it was that it was that season where we broke the NFL record for most consecutive field goals made. So Vinatieri made forty five consecutive field goals in a row. That's insane. So again, be, being a part of that and um, again, super super special. Like that will yeah. go down in like the record books, you know. So. I mean, it, it, there's a fine line that you really have to toe um, with with the, the outside distractions and how you balance your time with family, friends, and hobbies, and really delegating time to football and, and staying on 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 point with your craft. You know, isn't it funny? I, I I don't know if I'd say I'm a critic of this. I guess habit that we all have, but like the the monkey bar of goals that or the treadmill of you know accomplishment so it's like you're an outsider in the ufl trying to work to be on an insider in the nfl right then you achieve that and then there's like a smaller circle where it's like oh well now i'm in the nfl let me be a pro bowler and you're saying how you're upset that you didn't make it in 2015 and it's like man your ufl version of matt would be just ecstatic to be there right and it's like this ever shrinking bullseye that you can never satisfy and it's just weird how that happens um that's like when i look back at my nfl career and like the the titans snapper was recently you know had the the virus and i was like everyone's like are you gonna try out i was like honestly yeah for sure part of me wants all but like I'm good. I'm good with where things ended like i'm glad that my goal was to play in the nfl and i got three games and so why I'll never yeah. be able to, to fully satisfy whatever itch I have, you know? So, yeah. No, and I, and I, I'm kind of, I'm not, I'm on the outside of that circle now looking in like, but I have a, a, a my perspective is so much different than it was five years ago. Like, yeah. Or I'm looking in and I would love to just be a part of a team and contribute and snap and play yeah. the highest level and, and just enjoy it. Um, however, like I said, I'll still keep training, preparing, because I never want to get that call and be like, gosh, dang, like, I'm not in shape. I'm not ready. You know, I, I, I'll I, never want to have that, that feeling of regret. So, um, you know, it's it's cool that, like, now, like, yeah, I want to be a part of a team. I want to play. I know I can do it. However, like, my peace now lies in other things like my faith, yeah. my family. I have hobbies. I, I have a real estate business that's doing really well and got a baby on the way. So there's so many things like in life that are so much more important. Yeah. Um, that five years, the five years ago, Matt Overton would not have, you know, been thinking about that, you know, like it was all about football. And so once you can kind of like free your mind of the stress of what football brings, because people don't realize like, man, it's a, it's a job that can just crush you. And yeah. And so if you can endure the things that the NFL and pro pro sports can, can teach you, man, I feel like when I go into real estate, like I go into like meetings with like no worry or doubt. Like, I mean, sure. I get intimidated sometimes because I'm, I'm new in this, in this real estate game, but not the pressure or anxiety that I felt in the locker room when I was, you know, struggling. Yeah. Um, or preparing for a big game. So it, it's, it's crazy. It, it, the development that football has, has brought to my life and, and like you too. And it's, it's really, really cool to look back and reflect on um, how it really builds your character and, and um, yeah, really just, uh, provides you an opportunity to grow in so many different ways. I, uh, I've been listening to this whole series on identity and the, the way this speaker breaks it down is you, some people have like uh, 
an identity that's based off their internal feelings. And that yep. changes a lot. Some people have an identity that's based off of like external factors, like their parents or their, the culture they're surrounded with, which is also like not necessarily healthy. But then like you were talking about faith, it's like, all right, that's a whole different identity that's stable. And like, it's just, it's cool when you're an athlete, there's this tendency to place your identity in that external goal of whatever it is. But when you get to the point of, realizing that that's not all there is and have you have your identity elsewhere. I'm just, let me just say, I'm excited for you. This next phase of life, you're married. Congratulations on that. You got a kid on the way. Congratulations on that. And you, you've built this career outside of football, which as much of a distraction as that might be from your free agency goals and getting signed from a, 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 a different team. Like this is, this is the next phase of life. And, you know, I feel like as far as the, the child thing, uh, uh, like the child area of life, I'm just one step ahead of you and dog, it is so much, <laughs> so much fun. Well, so, dude, I, I mean, like I, I post, I reposted one of your videos when you had little Drew walk in and she was holding your hand. I'm like, I, I don't know why, but I, I want a girl first. Yeah. And so, and I think it that that uh, idea developed because my dad and sister have such a great relationship that I always really liked the, yeah. that relationship. And so um, even though I'd be stoked to have a boy and, and be able to do like boy things with them, all that kind of stuff. But it's that that uh, that daughter father bond is special. And so, yeah. you know, I want a girl first. It's the best. My wife really wants a boy first. And so we're, we're kind of on that uh different ends of the spectrum there but yeah. um and it's like it's when we found out we we're pregnant it was the day after my birthday and uh i know as men we get asked all the time when do you think you'll be ready to be a, a dad and you just kind of like i don't know i think i'll be ready whenever and but it wasn't until like we had that solid like definite answer that we're pregnant and expecting that i was like all right it's game time like mm -hmm. there was no no hesitation for me to be excited or there was no doubt no worry of course I'm a little more mature than I would be if I was 25 but it was just really cool like to have that experience and, and feel like man like all right I'm gonna be a dad my yeah. wife's pregnant we have so much to look forward to started to read my baby books I, I read that Ben Watson uh playbook yeah. which is I mean we can relate as football players um but that's a that's a really good one to read and uh, Ben Watson's got a lot of cool knowledge to share and it's kind of faith based yeah. all kind of stuff. But um, dude, man, it's, it's the only thing that I wish I could do is take my little baby boy or girl and, you know, be out on the, on the field after a game or something, you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, it, it, I, I always envied my, my teammates who had their kids out on the field after a game or something like that. That's cool. Yeah. But there's other cool things too that you'll be able to involve them with well, however no, it pans out. So no question, man. So yeah. Uh, yeah, your videos with little Drew, man, it's it's adorable and it's so cool and and seeing uh, you guys' life together. And yeah, we're getting ready to move to Nashville and and uh, it's a little bittersweet because Indianapolis has been home to me for eight years and Bree has been here for ever since college. You know, so we'll be close to her family. We've we've lived in Nashville kind of part-time for three years now. So it's, it's a little bit more of a easier transition just because we do have a community down there and um, yeah. closer to her family. My sister's there in town now, but man, we love it down there. <laughs> and uh, we love the people. We love the vibe of the city and, and we're just feeling called to go there and, and, uh, and uh, call it home. So we're excited to get down there and get her situated with doctors and, yeah, and so we're we're doing March, so we're right on the corner. Well, man, if you need any hookups or recommendations for doctors or hospitals, whatever, we got. Might, the whole, might, we don't have any yeah. yet. We've we've uh, put some feelers out, but yeah, we might have to get yeah. some referrals. You know, I got you, man. Well, let me t let me tell you this, man. I I'm thankful that you gave me the time this past hour. Uh, I really do admire the dedication, uh, the perseverance the courage that you have lived through your football career. Again, it's provided a big inspiration for me. Um, and I'm excited for you to move down here. I'm excited for the little girls, hopefully to, uh, yeah. to, to grow up together. But, um, 
yeah, look forward to talking. And if you guys want to find out more about Matt and what he's up to, uh, you can find his information in the show below. But we'll be talking, Matt. Have a good one. I appreciate you, brother.